Yo everyone, what's up? It's Brian and Jim from Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to our first PC game review. Now of course, we're still looking at Simpsons game, but today we're specifically going to be looking at Bart's House of Weirdness. Now before Jim goes into the history, I just want to say one thing. We are aware of the two other PC games for The Simpsons, and those titles being Virtual Springfield, and the other being The Simpsons Cartoon Studio. The truth is, we weren't able to load them up and we didn't order them in time to try and play them. Yeah, I tried getting some emulated versions, but I couldn't get them to work. But either way, me and Jim actually thought about and talked it over. We felt like these were more just simulations versus video games. Like, in Virtual Springfield, you basically go around and you click on various objects, and it's fine. It's actually fairly entertaining. Jim had it when he was a kid. But we don't necessarily think that's really a game, per se. The same with Cartoon Studio. It's almost like Mario Paint or something like that. Yes, you can have plenty of fun with it, but it's more of a creative tool versus actual video game. So... Like I said, today we're only checking out Bart's House of Weirdness. Released in 1992, this was developed by Distinctive Software. And they're probably best known for, well, the Test Drive series in the late 80s. And it was published by Konami. So, well, there's a good sign. It's 1992. It's Konami. How can this go wrong? So as you take a look at these graphics, I want you to keep one thing in mind. This is the third Simpsons game, and it is on DOS. Remember DOS? Yeah. Some of you who are probably younger aren't that familiar with DOS, but for most of us, it was what helped us learn command lines on the computer. But anyway, I digress. DOS was never known for great graphic capabilities, but this game looks freaking awesome. I mean, in all reality, the colors are spot on for The Simpsons. There's plenty of detail. There's animation going on all over the screen. I mean, look at some of these scenes. Look how many different things are moving and going on right now. In each stage, you usually have like multiple enemy enemies per screen. There's no slowdown there. It's just that, like I said, me and Jim, we were kind of blown away by how good it looks. We expected something to look much, much shittier once we heard we had to play a goddamn PC, early PC game. I gave it an 8, Jim gave it a 7, rounds out to a 7.5. I'm not even going to add a beer to the meter. I enjoy these graphics. All right, the sound. Ah, another surprisingly good spot. I'm not going to go and say that the sound in the game or the sound effects are amazing by any stretch of the word, but there's just so much variety here, and it really impressed us. Every different screen's got different music. There's a lot of sound effects going on. None of them are particularly great, but there's a lot of them. And the music's pretty unremarkable. You're not going to be humming anything after. But it gets the job done, it's upbeat, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to say chiptune, because it's not really chiptune, but it's peppy, let's put it that way. Actually, some of the music sounds, it's weird. It almost, I don't know if it was a development thing or what, but it almost sounds like they didn't get the license to the music of The Simpsons, and they kind of had to remake it. So everything kind of sounds similar, but it doesn't sound exactly like it should. And to be honest, even the Game Boy and NES did a better job of that. We both gave it sixes. You know, it's above average. And it doesn't get high scores for maybe the quality, but definitely for the quantity. Eh, we'll just add one beer. Maybe you'll enjoy the sound a little more if you're a little buzzed. All right, as far as the control is concerned, well, I hate to say it, but like most early Simpsons game, they are terrible. I will give this game one break. They're terrible because it's the typical computer controls. You gotta use your directional pads to move, you gotta use enter to jump, and you gotta use your space button to either shoot or, or move an item or whatever. So our first biggest problem with this game is just the stiffness overall. As you can imagine, think like most of these pre-rendered animation style games. You hit the enter button and your jump, it has to go through its whole motion. But there's a delay to it. When you click it, I mean, you gotta time that shit so perfectly. And when you have enemies and bombs and shit coming at you, you need to be not only really fast, but you need to kind of preemptively think about it. It just, it sucks. The movement's a little stiff. The shooting, once again, there's just that weird stiff delay. I know I'm reusing the word stiff way too many times, but it really, there's no other way to describe it. It's really rough, and it just adds such a level of difficulty to a game that's already hard as shit because of trial and error. So, I gave it a 3, Jim gave it a 4, rounds out to a 3.5, and I'm going to add 3 beers to the meter, because 
just after trying a few levels you're gonna need them all right the gameplay is another rough spot it's another game that's reminiscent of all the early simpsons games it's another platformer at heart now this one it's a little more non-linear than the others you have a lot of options to where you can go and what order you want to do everything but really you're just jumping around and shooting stuff there's not too much more to say about it the levels have different things you have to do it's pretty interactive for the most part but it's also really non-intuitive. You have to do a lot of trial and error, and they don't give you a lot of items to use either. You're pretty much, I'm not gonna say survival horror levels, but you have to be really careful with your items and your weapons because you're gonna run out, and once you run out, you're pretty much screwed. This game's really frustrating too in a lot of ways. You know how people always complain in say Castlevania or Ninja Gaiden where if you get hit, you get knocked back? Well, guess what? That happens here too. You, when you get knocked back, you can get knocked back between screens. You can take really cheap deaths and get knocked into death pits. And that happens a lot, let me tell you. We gave it fours. It, it does its job, but it doesn't particularly do it well. It's slightly below average, but we've played a lot worse. I'm going to add two beers just because of how just overall annoying it is. So before I move on to originality, I just want to bring up one point that I, I wanted Jim to talk about. See these aliens? It's just occurred to me that a lot of these early Simpsons games, these aliens are a, not, I wouldn't say a primary foe, but they're in a lot of the early games. And really in the Simpsons themselves, we only remember them as in show video game enemies. What about Kodos and Krang? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm just shitting in the wind. But look, the originality, Jim covered it basically. There is nothing original here. It's a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, sure, it's an early Simpsons game, so we definitely gave it points there. And it is the first one for the PC, so based on our standard rules, it's going to get points for that. But other than that, nah, nothing really new. Your standard power-ups and weapons. So overall, we, we both gave it a 5. If it wasn't the first PC game or the third Simpsons game, it would have got much lower. So just for the fact of people liking the shit in the wind, I'm going to add two beers. Piss! Piss! <laughs> Don't have a cow. Piss! All right, the replayability. Like a lot of these games, not much. You get it from the trial and error, you get it from the difficulty. If you know what you're doing, you're going to breeze through the game. If you don't know what you're going to do, you're going to be doing this a lot just trying to figure out what the hell you're supposed to be doing. Once again, we're going by our standard rules. We gave it a three. I mean, you're gonna have to play it a lot to know what the hell you're doing. I'm gonna give it, you know what, another two beers just for pissing me off again. You mean pooping you off? I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him slow and painfully. All right, folks, so overall, what you have here is your standard DOS platformer. The control and the gameplay really drag it down, but the graphics are impressive enough that we might not suggest buying it, but if you know somebody who has it, or you're savvy enough to get an emulated version of this game, go ahead and try it out. It's nostalgic enough, and of the earlier Simpsons game, aside from the arcade of course, this is probably one of your better options for reliving the Simpsons. So as you can see, I gave it a 4, Jim gave it a 5. I'll add one more beer just because we would have loved to have seen something much better in the early 90s. When it comes to the beer pairing, I wanted to go with something from one of my rare beers. I'm going to go with the Alvisholt Lava Stout. Now I'm not sure if I said it right because it's an Icelandic beer, but I can say Lava Stout so that's at least a plus. This beer comes in at 9.4% and it boasts a shit ton of flavor. We figured get yourself a bottle of this, sit down and play a game. Two rare things deserve each other. And worst case, if you don't enjoy the game, I can probably guarantee you're going to enjoy the beer. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, give us a thumbs up or click subscribe. All right, come back tomorrow for Krusty's Super Fun House.